Hello, we're back with Might and Magic 3, Isles of Terra on the SNES. This is Will and F, and we'll be continuing our adventure today. Last time we um, went through Fountainhead. Um, okay, there we go. Last time we went through Fountainhead, and um, we defeated the Rat Overlord. Um, who's controlling the, uh, who sort of took over Fountainhead because he imprisoned the protector, Morphos. Um, but unfortunately we couldn't free Morphos, um, he's bound in a chest and we couldn't pick the lock because we have nobody with thievery. But I was thinking today, our six adventurers aren't um, set in stone, like we can swap adventurers out if we want, if we need an extra healer, we can, you know, create up a healer. You can even hire different people to be in your party, like, um, in the inn here, we have a robber sitting in there, so I told myself, why don't I just swap one of my party members out for a robber and, uh, for the robber in there and, uh, um, go pick that lock, so... I figure that's what we're gonna do. Actually, in my first playthrough, that's what I did to all the early chests. I just, um, like, I went through the, uh, the dungeons and the locks that I didn't pick, went out, put the robber in, went back to the dungeon, um, picked all the locks. Um, so who are we gonna swap out? Um, our healers, we'll keep our healers, um, maybe our knight? We'll dismiss the knight. Because if you remember... Let's see. Is our knight? Okay, our knight is still there. I've run into a bug before where I've dismissed the character and they've just disappeared. So um, I always get scared when I dismiss that they're just gonna... bug out and just be deleted from the game. So there's no enemies, um, actually, uh, there's a chest here, behind this wall, I'm wondering, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna equip the robber with a couple of things first, just, you know, so they're not useless, because right now they're at level 1, the rest of our party is at level 5. So let's give him a few things here. Uh, just oops, a couple of um, cheap stuff, like a short sword, that's fine. Uh, short bow. Um, armor. Uh, give him a shield, I suppose. And scale armor. Them leather gauntlets, leather boots, and a leather cloak. There. Oops, no, not the helm. Yeah, it's perfect. So he's the robber that you start out with in your, in your default party. Um, he has decent thievery. I mean, robbers have almost no trouble picking locks in this game, except some of the more advanced locks in later on, you need to level up a bit first. Um, ninjas have trouble picking locks, they have mm, about, I don't want to say half the, uh, the thievery skill that robbers have, but close enough. So let's just give him a few things so he doesn't die immediately. C12, nice. He has amazing accuracy and really good luck. Um, he's a gnome robber. What's weird, gnomes get one less HP per level. Robbers get a decent amount of HP though, the class itself. Um, but gnomes also get plus five to thievery, I believe. 
two rats behind here. If we're lucky, we can take them out in the first round. I was afraid that might happen. They knocked him unconscious. Not a big deal. Just heal him back up as long as he's not dead. If you're dead, you don't get any XP. Come on. Three rounds to take out two moose rats. Uh, we don't have our knight though, which uh, is our heavy hitter, one of our heavy hitters. Uh, let's just a couple of first aids will bring him right back up. And we should be able to pick this first try. And he triggered a trap. There we go. Let's see. I don't think he... They level up pretty fast, robbers. They actually level the fastest out of all the classes, so... Um, so he found a shield. It's probably a crappy one. shield, you don't want to use that. Um, there's two chests in the storehouse we can open, but it's guarded by a whole bunch of uh, baddies. So, we'll have a couple first aids here. Sorcerer took quite a few... Huh? How much damage did he take? Like 30 hit points of damage? Yeah. He doesn't have a high armor class. That's... Ooh, our archer. God, we don't have the... Uh, hmm. Yeah, they're starting to outgrow a little bit uh, first aid, it's starting to get tedious to use, but it's the most mana efficient. Fortunately our knight is going to miss out on these experience points, but... Why did only two arrows shoot? Uh, the mysteries of the universe. Three bows. Did I equip it, everything on him? Mm -hmm. What about you? You have a bow. Did I just hallucinate of seeing two arrows instead of three? I guess. Feeling more rested than yesterday. Um, Pretty much eight hours last night. Yeah, those 
rats are really doing some damage to us. Like 40 points of damage I just cured. Nearly 50. Okay. So the bubble man probably resists toxic and the rats probably have a little bit of resistance too to toxic cloud, but overall it's probably the best spell we can use at the moment. There, good job. Dark shade. It's toxic cloud then. Nice. What you'll notice just when you use AoE spells that hit everyone in it always seems to miss the last person, um, and that's due to a bug. Um, yeah. Come on, take him out. Yes. There we go. Hopefully we won't trigger the traps, because it'll probably knock Dark Shade unconscious. Yes. Clubber found shield, a little bit of gold. Another bronze shield, that's odd. We rolled the exact same random item twice in a row. The game's bugged. Uh, you wouldn't be able to tell if it was. No, he probably has a level. Yeah, he probably has like two levels. Build, a bunch of crap. It's not even stuff equip worth equipping because bronze and wooden actually lowers your AC instead of increasing it. Just because, like, yeah, I don't know. It's just the way the game is. Okay, what time is it? So it only just turned night. Um. We can run through the arena once. We'll give him a couple of heals. He took some damage. Oh my. Holy crap. So taking another 50 points of damage. Here. Fleeting images shimmer in the silvered pane. Silvered pane like reflections in a lake. Speak your destination and be carried away. Okay, so if you put in arena, you get teleported to the arena. Now you can go to any of the four corners here, and uh, there's a desk with a, a dude. Welcome to the arena. Do you wish to make battle in honor of Bellum? We certainly do. Hunt down your foes and return to me when you want. You have won. Good luck. Okay. So there is a specific pattern. Um, like the arena, enemies ran get randomly... So depending on the level of the arena like the first time you beat it, it's level one the second time you beat it, it's level two all the way up to level 50 and then the same enemies just keep respawning each new level it introduces a new possible enemy or it introduces a new enemy that's considered the boss of that level it, it puts in one of those enemies and after you defeat that enemy any Subsequent arena battles could include that enemy as a random, um, and the number and le types of enemies that spawn are random. Now, there's a very efficient way to do this. There's a lot of squares in here, um, but if you walk a specific path, you will hit every square that enemies can spawn. Um, let's see if I can remember what it is. Ooh. 
See that floating head there? That's a screamer. We missed it. They're incredibly fast. Incredibly wacky too, look at that. They're incredibly fast and they hit everyone in the party. And when they do, they make you insane. You get the insane status condition. And what that does, it increases your strength and speed. But it decreases your accuracy, your intellect, your personality. Um, maybe your luck. So it's good and bad. Um, I'm just gonna energy blast this guy, um, just to get him out of the way. There we go. So let's heal up. Get you to do some healing. We'll give a heal to everyone. Yeah, screamers suck. Because if you're fighting like a group of three of them, then they each attack you one time. So that's three group attacks. So one, it so they attack basically 18 times, one each for each of your six characters, and you get three levels of insanity. Okay, I think four squares this way. squares this way, or seven squares this way. So the boss here might have been the Screamer. Yeah, probably the Screamer was the boss. So next, any... Okay, there you go. And you get uh, 1,000 experience. Le win 2, you get 2,000. Win 3, you get 3,000. So it's a 1,000 times the number of your win. Um... Unfortunately, our knight is not getting this experience, but we can... There's a fountain here, we can pay gold to bring him up to par with the other. So he should have gained like three levels by now. Two or three at least. Um, let's cure our insanity. And so we'll probably just rest to make it daytime because... Or... We can actually visit the, uh, the guild. Everyone's insanity. I don't know if there's any spells, new spells. I think level four or five is the the last level you gain you can gain new spells here. Yeah, let's check. Sleep. Revitalize, what about you? Nothing. Create rope. Nah. Mm. Create rope, I suppose. We're gonna make our archer like the utility is gonna cast all the cheap utility spells, and then the sorcerer will cast the major damage spells. So one thing that they had in Might and Magic 4 and not in Might and Magic 3, uh, a few things. First, Day of Protection and Day of Sorcery. It basically casts all the sorcery buff spells and the other spell casts the cleric buff spells for a, a bargain price. Nobody leveled, but he probably leveled a few times. Now he'll be able to get through to Morphos, and we can release him. And, uh, he's not gonna die. What day is it? Ten's day. Fortunately, we have to trek through that uh, tedious dungeon full of traps. Oh. 
And we don't have any rope and hooks, so we need to cast. Create rope. Create our own rope to go down. Yes. And light. Let's light up the place. Let's kill this bat that always respawns. should have respawned. Oh no, we got the barrel. Okay. A couple more traps. Ratos. Ratos. So his thievery should be high enough now to pick Morphos' lock. And there's actually some decent items in, in Morphos' uh, chest here. Gems set in the corners of the chest glow with power. Open the lid. Yes sir. Dark Shade, now's your cue. Ooh, Dark Shade sets up a trap, picks the lock. A gaseous form rises from the chest and hovers in the air before you. I am Morpho, servant of Gaim and protector of Fountainhead. By releasing me from my prison, you have lifted an enduring curse from this fair town. Accept my reward and heed my advice. Visit the fountain that stands alone. And a whole bunch of items. Now, there's a, th a thing, um, an oversight that I noticed. If you come up here, and you don't have the create rope spell, and you don't have a rope and hooks, and you don't have a thief, so you can't pick Morphos' lock, the, the chest gives you a, a rope and hooks to go back, then you're stuck here. You can't go back down. So what you'd have to do is use uh, Mr. Wizard's help. He will teleport you back to Fountainhead at the inn. Um, it, but unfortunately, you lose a level when, uh, when that happens. It's free to use at level one. Not just no. Um, but yeah. Okay. So we'll go back, pick up our knight, put Dark Shade back in the. Uh, let's see, Lapis Shield. Decent frost mugger spear, silver sling. Decent, decent. Um, we'll give the sling to the barbarian since, yeah. Um, so frost mugger spear. What does that do? have a guide uh, open beside me here. So Frost does plus four cold damage and Mugger does plus four thievery. So the Mugger is useless for us right now. Uh, we don't have a thief, uh, well Dark Shade, but he does, he's not going to stay with us. So I mean that the Frost Spear is good, but the Mugger part is... Um, and Lapis Shield, we'll give this to our Lapis is a plus two, I believe. Uh, to our um, cleric, so they have better defense. They stay alive better. Discard. Give us to the cell. Equip. And Ilawa has a few items. On a scarab in a ring, I think. Bronze ring sucks. Coral scarab. That will be useful for... Wisp. Wisp has low AC. Coral does... Plus... 
one AC, so it gives them an extra AC point. Not a whole lot, but their measly five AC is gonna help. Yeah. Now the thing with the the druid, um, for roleplay purposes, I usually. only give them natural items, like coral is a natural item, coral is a natural substance. Stuff like steel, um, iron is not natural, so I don't give them those items. Um, the best items, they, I, I'll give them uh, stuff like diamonds are naturally occurring, um, I give them diamond ruby is naturally occurring, um, but as for like lower tier stuff, ebony is the, the highest I'll give them. Ebony is a type of uh, wood. It's a really strong wood. Just because you expect like a druid to, you know, to amplify their powers, you know, they need natural um, stuff that stuff from the natural world instead of like for the sorcerer I give them like steel and gold and stuff because like I don't know you expect sorcerers to like dabble in um, alchemy and stuff so they know how to use the uh, chemical properties of different materials to amplify the powers yeah it's, just, it's a role playing thing I like to do in this game so this is our auto map here. You can tell it's not that great. Especially not when we were treated with the where where are we uh, map we had for uh, Might and Magic 4. So we're officially done Fountainhead. Yeah, there's nothing left in Fountainhead for us to do. Kill this bat. It always respawns. So I was hoping to do the first actual outside dungeon. Um, each, each town has like a, a, a cavern below it that you can, you can do. First external dungeon is full of us. Uh, I think it's called the Temple of Moo. Yeah, the Might and Magic has a tendency to name the uh, temples after like animal sounds. Temple of Ba, the Temple of Moo, Temple of Yak. Um, gems. We'll keep our 31 gems. Deposit a bit of gold here. Deposit 5,000 more gold. Yeah. So we get 4 gems a week and 289 gold a week in interest. Nothing spectacular at this point, but every bit helps. And as you add and accrue interest and stuff. Um, let's see, did he level again? Probably did. Yeah. He has a lot of experience. 29,000? Hold on. How much experience did the other people get? Seems like they got a lot of experience. Oh yeah! For releasing Morphos. It gives a lot of experience. So he might have gained like one or two levels here. Each. Yeah, this guy needs like 45 experience for another level. So close. So our knight is gonna have to catch up a little bit. So 
Say goodbye to Darkshade, take our knight back. Next place. Dismiss, actually save before we dismiss. I've had before dismissing a character. Um, I don't know how dismissing works. I was standing outside this inn. I dismissed the character and he wasn't in this inn. I was like, uh oh. It's like crap. Um, so I looked around at all the other inns and found him. He was in a different inn. So he must have walked like miles and miles. I don't know why it did that, but it's some weird stuff. Great. Mm. So unfortunately, um, exchange you with you, exchange, move them back into the second position. Yeah. So unfortunately, if you look in awards, he has 10 skulls given a cranion, but the other people who freed Morphos have a, an award, saved Fountainhead. Um, so, Dumpy misses out on that, but it's no big deal. Um, the main thing is the experience that he, he lost. Okay, we're gonna sell this crap. Frostmugger Spear. Don't need this. We'll get the Frost Spear. Actually, um, Druids can use spears. We'll give that to the Druid. Um, let's see, what are they using right now? Resistance, so um, who else can use spear? The archer. He has no cold resistance. Maybe we'll give it to him instead. Or her. Her, sorry. Um, what's a cutlass? Cutlass versus spear. Let me check that. Cutlass does 2 to 8. Spear does 1 to 10. 1 to 9. So the same average damage, uh, so yeah, spear is fine. Bronze ring, sell that. The knight. He already has 5 cold resist, and claw bar is 10, so... He's already using an electric uh, static flail. Mugger would help when we give, um, we're planning on giving our archer, uh, like I did my last playthrough of this game, uh, the thievery skill. You can purchase purchase it later on, but by, the, by that point we'll have much better weapons anyway, so it'll be useless to use. There we go. Now I should have an extra... Oh, we should probably check... Uh, if there's anything to buy here. Got a new shipment. Flamberge of Aid. Flamberge is actually the most powerful two-handed weapon in the game. Um, and it can cast first aid. Uh, the Barbarian can't use Flamberge, I don't think. Let me check. So the Archer and the Knight can use it. Tempted to give it to the archer, um, but yeah, no. Go keep him with that extra frost resist and frost damage. Um, anything else? Glass belt, nothing. Glass, I think, does like plus zero. It's just a, it's just a cool sounding uh, 
yeah, it adds no modifier, it's just a cool sounding, uh, cool sounding game. Um, so we're done this place. Uh, uh, did I sell the bronze ring? No, I didn't. Did I? I don't remember if I sold that bronze ring. I did. Okay. So I guess let's go into the temple of uh, Ba Mu Mu Temple of Mu. Um, we can buff ourselves first. Because uh, the undead are still a bit tough. These zombies have a lot of health. There you go. So 180 gold to buff us, plus 3. Five minutes here. Um, Thirty-six minutes. Okay, I remember there's two orcs just ahead here. They shouldn't be too much trouble now. Are they? There they are. There you go. Now one awesome. There's a lot of buffing fountains, fountains that can buff you in this game. One of the best ones, well, early game, here. Oh, we can't go yet, we don't have uh, pathfinding. But the fountain here gives you um, plus 50 HP, and it allows you to go over, over your maximum HP. 6.36 p.m. Yeah. There's another fountain nearby that boosts your armor class by 5. But uh, by the time we get there, it'll be a new day and we'll lose our buffs. So let's save here. I'll cast light. We don't have light yet. Um, levitate. We don't have levitate yet. traps in this uh, horrid carvings in the wooden floor mark the entrance to a dark temple enter yep this is full of skeletons zombies and this is probably either here or if you go to the second town first um, is where you'll encounter skeletons for the first time and they have a lot of physical resistance Empty rags hang on the remains of a luckless adventurer. Examine? Sure. Nothing. Um, now one thing I always found weird is... A broken skeleton lies on the floor. Take a closer look. A party found a light scroll. Do you wish to read? Now, what's weird is every spellcaster in this game starts with light. Even the hybrid. In fact, the hybrids only start with light. Um, so, it makes no point to have a light spell there. Um, I think there's a trap in the center there, so we're gonna walk around. I may be misremembering, but some traps in the center. Broke a skeleton lies. Nothing. Sacred silver skull. Okay. I think there's a trap in the floor here. Oh, maybe it's another dungeon. Nice. That was a zombie. Ah, oh, there's the trap. Okay. So zombies uh, can cause disease on you. Pretty, they have a lot of physical resistance, so they're a bit tough. Let's draw them out here so we won't face them head on. 
but they're really slow that's the thing zombies are slow so you can get in like one or two rounds before they actually attack um, and they always the undead enemies always attack cleric first they target the cleric until the cleric passes out and then they randomly attack other party members yeah so we don't have a robber to pick so we'll have to bash it down and yeah this game likes to throw a whole lot of enemies at you now one thing i learned is that even though they're undead toxic cloud does a significant amount of damage on these guys I figured they would be like trying to poison a, a, a skeleton it wouldn't be very effective but yeah it's actually extremely effective okay now there's traps in this room too I need to be careful where, where I step So, only the two first characters fall into the pit, um, two leaders, um, so the other characters avoid the pit, I guess that's the rationale there, um, but not everyone falls into pits. Come on, you can do it. See, when you attack a group of three, it does three damage indicators, but only damages two of them. It damages the second person three times because what it does is it moves, um, from what I've been told um, by some people, it moves the skeleton up one slot um, and it attacks the slot. So the skeleton moves up a slot then it attacks the slot that's empty, so it does damage to nothing. Um, so that there's a really sucky bug, um, which inevitably impacts gameplay. So that this would be like a, um, a moderate to high B-level bug um, on the scale. And, uh, um, it's just toxic cloud. It should have killed them both, but the, the last guy always takes no damage, which really sucks. Because if you're fighting like really tough enemies, now if I toxic cloud the one in the second position here, you see how the arrow is now pointing down. So there's an empty slot there for enemies. Um, now if I attack that slot, it'll show damage, but it won't actually hurt the skeleton. Um, here, I'll, I'll give you a I'll show. Or, no, it doesn't show damage, but you just miss, 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 because there's nothing there to hit. Um, which really sucks, like, this game is rife with bugs uh, that, have, that impact your gameplay. Um, I think there's traps here. No? There's one. Um, here's another room full of undead. Um, okay, it didn't kill them, but maybe another. Yeah. It's it really sucks. I I hate that. 
it's like that. This game is it sort of takes the fun out of the gameplay. And like I mentioned, there it killed all three. I don't know why it did that that time, but um, usually it doesn't. But anyway, there's there's some weird stuff going on in the programming in the back back end. Uh, um, So there's a really useful spell we're going to find in here for our cleric. Um, yeah. So it should have killed all of them, but it didn't. This guy is extremely resistant to physical damage. And uh, of course, undead always attack the cleric, and only the cleric. I'm going to uh, energy blast this guy just to get him off. Energy is extremely effective on these guys. And, uh, our cleric might be diseased. Yeah, he is diseased. Plus three. Yikes. So I don't have the ability to cure or suppress disease yet. Oh no. Broken skeleton lies on the floor. Take a closer look. The party found a turn undead scroll. Do you wish to read it? Yes, 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 yes. Cleric. Um, Salazar learns a turn undead spell. So turn undead does a decent amount of damage versus undead. Um, it's an AoE spell. Try to avoid the traps here. There's chests here we can't pick yet, but we might come back later with uh, our robber. Sacred Silver Skull. So yeah, I guess this episode will just be um, this. This dungeon. There's a boss in here. Unfortunately, we don't have jump yet or levitate, which allows us to avoid those traps. Um, we could go and get those spells actually, which I think I'm gonna do. We have to visit the second town, which isn't that far away. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do that actually. A couple of us should have level ups. Pricey to buff our party though. And there's orcs on the way, so we'll have a couple fights. Um, but overall, it's just orcs and goblins we have to worry about. Stayed here. Oops. Wrong person. There's input lag on the 
in the SNES version because it was significantly less powerful than a, a computer of the time. So they had to implement like delay. And you can actually change the delay to um, delay is at one, the lowest. You might be able to pick up Pathfinding. That's in the second town. Let's see. Uh, no, we definitely don't have enough. We need at least 5,000 gold. You need two characters with Pathfinding to be able to Pathfind, and two characters with Mountaineering to be able to go through the mountains. Yeah, the orc shouldn't pose too much of a problem. This is the way to Castle White Shield, but we need to be Crusaders to enter the castle, which we actually find in the first dungeon, the temple I was just in. It's in there, it's deep in the, the temple. There's a, there's a statue, when you reach it, it says, I now dub thee all Crusaders. going to get this episode. Some hiding in the grass there, a goblin. A few more things hiding in the grass. Now there's a goblin here, and sometimes when you walk on that square where the goblin is, you get damaged, like as if it's attacking you, but it's not there. It's I think it's a bug. Almost at the second town. It's not really not the far. Um, I mean, on a scope of the game, it's about it's a couple hours walk. Um, if you take like every step is like ten minutes, so it's like a two three hour walk. Here we go, Baywatch. Now this is full of undead, so we got to be careful. But first, we'll level up gonna help us a bit. Level 7. Oh yeah, but it's gonna use all of our gold. Okay, excellent. Now, I don't think leveling up cures your status effects. No, it does not. It should be about 4 or 5. I don't know, just plus 3. We'll find a temple, we'll cure that. Um, skeleton. Zombie here. Oh, skeleton. There's two zombies down here. This is where the guild is, but we need to find the, the guild membership first. There's the zombies. number of gems too, but I think we were finding gems, so we should have, still have a good amount. Oh yeah, we got 270 gems, we got plenty. Okay, so I think that's all the zombies down here, yeah. That's the guild. Now, make our way to the temple. Actually, we'll, uh, clear out the skeletons first. A 
I like the sprites in this game a lot better than the ones in uh, the DOS version. Gold coins shimmer underwater in the fountain of Athia, a nymph of the great sea. Do you wish to throw in a coin? Yes. Keep wishing. Coin, keep wishing. And skeleton creeping in the background there. So, you'll see. Come on. Today is your lucky day. Now, when that happens, you see, luck. You get plus 100 luck, which is amazing. Astonishing. That helps with resistance and um, avoiding status effects and stuff. There's a skeleton. Skeleton gives five gems, so oh, that's useful. Nice. The big X means if if it's a big X that shows quickly, usually it's like a big hit. Usually kills them. Nice. That worked as it should. Written on the wall, Great Sea Voyages, by passage to Swamp Town at Night's Point. So you have to take a boat to Swamp Town. There's the mirror, we can go back, we can teleport back to the first town, easily. Um, maybe I'll cure disease right now, just to get it out. A couple skeletons in here, two, and there, nice. We have a silver sling, so that's uh, extremely. It's our most. our best range of weapon right now. Silver is a plus two modifier. Um, on these grounds are summoned the powers of Esoterica. Be you in need of aid. Yeah, you can cure the disease on Salazar. There we go. All good. So you see Salazar, usually it recovers all your hit points too when you heal, but because disease lowers your endurance, um, it raised my endurance back up, And but the thing is, now my max hit points went up because my endurance... Uh, actually, we have uh, Turn Undead. Let's try that out, give it a test run. It's even more effective than uh, Toxic Cloud. There we go. Oh. Written on the wall. To return and savor our seaport's fog, answer the glass with the word Sea Dog. So that's the teleport code for this town, Sea Dog. Travel town, and here's where we find pathfinding, mountaineering, and the guild. Would you be wanting to buy membership to the Albatross Guild at only 100 gold? Sure. I don't even know how much gold we have left. Oh no, we might not have enough gold to buy spells. Uh, I'll just do the... For now, I'll just do the main casters. I'll save our gold. Um, actually, I don't... I don't think we can get Jump and Levitate here. Um, hold on, let me think. You can find jump in the... I think the earliest you find jump is in the cave underneath this town here. But it's dangerous. Um, yeah, yeah, we're... Uh, let's just have a look in the, uh, the store here. Crossbow. Crossbow is better than um, short bow. So we'll get one of those. It's cheap. Um, 
coral ring mail. Oh, the knight and archer can use that. Uh, lightning, heroism, scroll of elements, potion of antidotes. Nothing really. Sell the short bow and give him a crossbow. Crossbow does like one extra average damage, I think, something like that. Actually, let me check here. Crossbow does four to eight damage. Short bow does three to six. So you're doing one and a half extra average damage. Um, let's rest and check out the spells, I guess. It's not nighttime yet. Actually, let's. Uh, there's an orc place right outside town, an orc encampment. We can clear that out um, and get some gold from it. That's why, uh, not orcs. Well, there's an orc one here, but a goblin one right here, I think. Oh, I forgot to equip the uh, crossbow. still has it. Oh yeah, we got sacred silver skulls too. I don't know, maybe we'll save the temple till the next episode. Um because we're already at an hour. We'll clear out the temple in the second town in the second episode, I think. This guy is not moving. Now he is. So this isn't the goblin. This is actually a quest here, I think. Fair-sized hut made of twigs, branches, and dried mud. Search inside. A thousand sparrows flitting on their perches around you speak through the fluttering of their wings. Wow, I don't know how to voice this one. Chris, the last unicorn lies entombed, but it is long before what should be the end of its years. Only when the golden alicorn is returned to this shrine will he be released from his premature darkness. Will you search for the missing relic? Yes. The alicorn is hidden somewhere in the swamplands. Return it to this shrine to free Icarus. So. I've never actually freed Icarus. I know I know where it is, but it's it's a multi-chain quest. You gotta do multiple things. And it's optional. Uh, so I've never actually freed Icarus, but I, I know how to do it. Uh, it just takes a while because you need to go somewhere, get a certain status effect, um, then talk to someone with that status effect. Um, and then you have to wait whole other year in the game, like one year of game time, and uh, get that status effect again. Or is it a year or is it per week? But anyway, there's specific days you need to go to get that status effect, and you need to go, and then when you, when she talks to enough people that have had that status effect, then something happens, and you need to bring her an item and um, and then she and then they give they give you the uh, the alicorn or something like that. The floor of the hut is littered with bones and filthy stoneware, and the benches look to be set up as makeshift bunks. In one corner is a set of dented goblin armor. Set the hut aflame. Sure, ashes and glowing embers rise into the air, floating on waves of heat radiating from the burning heart. 5,000 XP, Ooh, got some plate armor, other stuff, and some angry goblins. Okay, so... So 
Something in the grass there, I can see. A goblin. It's night time, there we go. Now we can check the spells. Did that give us gold or just items? Let me check. It did give us, I think it gave us like 5,000 gold, which is going to be helpful to buy spells. Jump and Levitate is the third town, but you can find Jump or Levitate or both in the um, cavern below this town. But it's full of traps, and so the funny is, funny thing is, you need Jump and Levitate to go easily through the cavern below the town, but you can also find it in the cavern below this town. So it's it's like. Do you wait until later to get the spell and then go through the cavern, or do you go through the cavern hitting the traps and then find it in there? Anyway, it's like halfway, uh, a little little bit of the ways so you'll find it. Uh, Welcome to our humble lodge of magic and mystery. Do you seek the wisdom of the albatross? Sure. Alright, let's see. Bye. Ah, we can get jump here. And levitate. Nice. So that will be extremely. And wizard eye is helpful too. Uh, lightning bolt. That's a very good AOE. Uh, acid stream sleep. We'll get lightning bolt just because. So what I usually like to do is buy the spells on the pure casters. Uh, Nature's Cure, that is a necessary. That's an extremely good heal spell. Um, suppress poison and disease. We'll give that to the cleric. You can't get suppress poison yet, but you can get the suppress disease. Power Cure. That's the most powerful heal in the game. Um, won't get it just yet. Now with the Nature's Cure, um, here we'll get Suppressed Poison. Great, those are very helpful spells we just bought. Uh, we'll get Suppressed Disease yet. Yeah, so what I usually like to do is to buy on the pure casters by the spells because they cost twice as much on the uh, hybrid casters um, you can find every spell in the game in dungeons like just lying around so uh, eventually you can find it um, and some of the, the highest level spells cost like 100,000, 200,000 gold um, on the hybrid casters um, so to find them is extremely so let's go in the uh, how much food do we have we must be running low on food four days ahoy there how do I do a captain ahoy there step up to the counter if you be searching for food or beverages shall I show you our selection that wasn't a great pirate voice but whatever um, so here basically you can buy food goblin slop an interesting mixture of fish grass and carrion carrion is like flesh uh, this foul smelling stew provides the basic means for sustaining life 50 gold will buy enough for 10 days fill your packs sure so here you can hear rumors you need the Green Eyeball Key to enter the Halls of Insanity. That's where you get, the Halls of Insanity is where you get um, the shrine that sells you every skill for like 100,000 gold, I think. Um, tip, eat more. So if you eat, oops, good stuff. 
to it. Some spells require gems to cast, so if you eat, and then you give a tip to the tavern, the barkeep, he gives you, like, gossip. Um, I pretty much know everything in the game that these guys tell you, so it's... Uh, but you can also get, um, in the DOS version, it's drink. Um, so you're drinking in a tavern, and you get drunk, you get a drunk status effect. In the Nintendo version that's censored, you eat, and you get stuffed instead. Um, if you eat too much. Now, stuffed is a neutral status effect. It increases your endurance, your personality, and luck, but it decreases your strength and accuracy, I think. Um, So we're past the one hour mark, I think I'm gonna end it here, um, next time we're going to do the... Um, we have Jump and Levitate, so we don't need to do the cavern. We'll do the temple first, um, and then we'll come and do the cavern in this town, and I think that's our goal for next episode. Um, yeah. So we gained a few levels this time. Um, oof, our Barbarian. Really carrying our party with 133 hit points. Um, gems, yeah. When we hit, when we get like 5,000 gems, there's a. We can, there's a shrine we can go to to buff our, um, our druid, and it gives the druid 10 stats. Uh, 10 points of stat boost to all their stats under 25 So this is why I like to have Their stats 14 or below because you can get it twice if you're at 14 Might you can use it twice so you go 14 to 24 and you're still under 25 so you can go to 34 so you can basically have a druid with 34 stats across the board um, which is excellent. Um, it makes them a great early, early fighter, early um, game fighter. But we still need to get some gems for that. Unfortunately, we don't have a, a thief, which picks the locks that some some chests have like thousands of gems in them, which is kind of what we need. Um, so one of our main priorities is to get into the halls of insanity and get to that shrine, but it's a dangerous place. You can't go there low level. The enemies there will wipe you in one hit. Um, there's evil, I think they're called evil eyes, and they do um, massive magic damage to everyone in the party. And if you're low level, they can wipe you in one or two rounds, um, one or two hits. And they have a ranged attack, so they can attack you from afar. So, like, you can't even get close to them before they wipe your party if you're low level. Um, yeah, anyway. That'll be it for this episode. Uh, it wasn't too, exciting of an, wasn't too exciting of an episode, but we freed Morphos. Um, we gained some levels and some new spells. And uh, we made a bit of progress. Um, so let's save here. This will be Ron F signing off until the next episode of Why Do Magic 3 Owls of Terra. Terra. Terra.